The Daily Reminder Network presents Dua Revival Season 2 Assalamu alaikum. One day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left the home of his wife Juwariya bint al-Halith May Allah be pleased with her to go for Salat al-Fajri, the dawn prayer while she was worshipping Allah in her designated prayer area of home. After several hours during the time of Duha in the forenoon, the Prophet ﷺ returned home to find his wife Juwariya worshipping Allah in the same position she was at when he had left her earlier in the morning. So he asked her, ما زلت على الحال التي فارقتك عليها? Are you still in the same position? You did not move since I have left you. She replied in the affirmative and said, yes. The Prophet ﷺ being who he is, the loving and caring man to his family, friends, me and you, taught us the following great dua and lesson. He said, I have recited four statements three times after I had left you. If they were to be weighed with all that which you have recited since the morning, they would outweigh them. Allahu Akbar, what are these statements? He continued and said, Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adada khalqihi wa rida nafsihi wa zina ta'arshihi wa midada kalimatih. Is that it? Yes. So by repeating these words three times, taking less than 30 seconds, the reward is greater and more blessed in comparison to those beautiful hours of worship Spent by our mother Juwariya, may Allah be pleased with her? Yes, Allahu Akbar. Brother, please explain and elaborate further on the meaning of this outstanding dua so that we may express it with understanding and passion. I will inshallah, but please be sure to focus and pay attention for you will enjoy inshallah. May Allah make it easy on me to explain, easy on you to understand, and easy on all of us to implement. Ameen Rabbil Alameen. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as narrated in Sahih Muslim began the dua by saying Subhanallah, commonly translated as All glory be to Allah. It can be further explained as the following. O oh Allah, you are free from any imperfection, free from any shortcoming, free from any lie attributed to you by the haters and the ignorant, and free from any association or similarity to any being in any form. So by saying this, you are negating every negative attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, wa bihamdih. One of its meanings is, O oh Allah, you are deserving of all praise. With that praise, you affirm Allah's oneness, uniqueness, strength, capability and all of his beautiful names and all types of praise. So ultimately by saying this you are affirming every positive attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now what remains in the dua is a description and explanation of the extent we want to negate the negative and affirm the positive attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me give you a quick analogy to help you appreciate what remains in the dua. Imagine a young boy who would tell his parents I love you and there's another young boy who further describes his love by saying I love you so much, as bright as the sun, as big as the sky. Wow, now that is some serious love. Allah is the best of examples. To what extent you want to express to Allah the statement, Subhanallah wa bihamdi. To what extent you want to negate the negative and affirm the positive attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one, adada khalqi, by the amount and number of his creation, Allahu Akbar. Do you realize how large of a number that will come up to? That includes every human being, every jinn, every angel, every animal, every living and non-living thing, every grain of sand in the desert and every drop of water in the oceans, every creation, that which we know about and that which we do not know about. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah wa bihamdih adada khalqih. Is that it? No. Number two, wa rida nafsih, until he is pleased. O oh Allah, I glorify you and praise you with the quality and quantity of that which pleases you. Allahu Akbar. This is the greatest goal you can achieve and the greatest extent you can reach. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi adada khalqihi wa rida nafsih. Number three, wa zina ta'arshih. And as heavy as his throne, Allahu Akbar, which is the heaviest thing known. The distance between the earlobe and shoulder of one of the angels carrying the throne is 700 years long. Allahu Akbar, how magnificent is Allah's throne. Number four and last, wa midada kalimatih. By the amount of ink and pens that are required to write down his words, his commands, what he has decreed, and his knowledge of everything, including the knowledge of the unseen, and the knowledge of what happens on the land and sea, and his knowledge of every leaf that falls from the tree. For he has said, if every tree was cut and made into pens, and every ocean was turned into ink, and was reinforced with another seven oceans of ink, ma nafidat kalimatullah then the pens would come to an end and you would run out of ink. But Allah's word will remain. Allahu Akbar.
سبحان اللہ و بحمده عدد خلقه و رضا نفسه و زینت عرشه و مداد قلماته سبحان اللہ و بحمده عدد خلقه و رضا نفسه و زینت عرشه و مداد قلماته سبحان اللہ و بحمده عدد خلقه و رضا نفسه و زینت عرشه و مداد قلماته The more you contemplate on these four statements, the closer and more sincere you'll be to your Lord. Don't forget to say it three times every morning. Subhanallah wa bihamdih, adada khalqihi, wa rida nafsihi, wa zina ta'arsihi, wa midada kalimatihi. May Allah bless you. Feel free to press like, but most importantly is for you to click share. Maximize the benefit. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.